this point in time, I would like to introduce to you the two people who are take, taking you into this afternoon and this morning's service. First, we have Ellen Scaver. She serves on the board at the Center of Spiritualist Enlightenment, NSAC Church in Falls Church, Virginia. Currently, she's an MPI student working towards her credentials as an NSAC minister, certified medium, and commission healer. She is one of the Center for Spiritual Enlightenment's Friday night meditation leaders and teaches a weekly class on the law of attraction. Ellen is a natural law coach who helps individuals who are searching for something greater to shift their beliefs so they can connect to the divine spirit and achieve their desired outcome. The other person I would like to introduce to you today who will be chairing today's church service is Carol Caesar. She is a lifelong spiritualist, originally from California. She has been a member too of the Center for Spiritual Enlightenment, NSAC in Northern Virginia for 20 years and has served since 2004 as a speaker, healer, chairperson, orientation class teacher, and shares in leading the Friday night meditation hour. She currently serves on the pastoral committee of the church and is a member of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, licensed minister and certified medium society. So Ellen and Carol, I would like to turn everything back over to you, if I can. Well, thank you so much, Joanne. It is so exciting to have you there in Hydesville. It's, it's just so neat for so many people who could never actually travel there in the past to be there. So I'm very happy to welcome all of you this morning or this evening, whatever time it might be, or afternoon. Uh, we're going to begin our religious service with the healing portion of our service, which, as so many of you know, healing is a big part of what spiritualism is. And to begin our healing service, we have two very special guests. Uh, Gary and Nancy Rael met at a spiritualist church in 1975, and they found immediately that they had two things in common spiritualism and music. They have played and sang together ever since, both playing multiple instruments and frequently joined by their daughter and two sons who helped to weave a beautiful web of harmony. So to begin our religious service, uh, let us welcome them as they sing an original song written by Nancy called The Essence of Me, uh, which will then begin our healing service.
These things bring me back to you. our distant healers now that are serving this morning, Reverend Pamela Bollinger, Reverend Patricia Horn, and Sue Owen, who are commissioned healers. They're serving as distant healers, but if you're a healer and you feel called to serve, please um, bring your healing guides forward and uh, send distant healing to all those who are in need of healing. We're going to um, pray this morning together our prayer for spiritual healing. And as we do, think of those who are in need of healing, um, whether it's people you know, or just send healing out to those in the world that, that are in need. So let us pray together our prayer for spiritual healing. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Amen. This morning we have a special guest who is going to lead us in our healing meditation. 
uh, perhaps not a stranger to most of you, uh, that is the Reverend Richard P. Scholler. Richard is an ordained spiritualist minister, certified medium, commissioned spiritualist healer, and a national spiritualist teacher. He served on the board of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, and he has served many spiritualist churches and camps and centers throughout the United States and Europe. He is also vice president of the International Spiritualist Federation. So let us uh, settle ourselves for a quiet healing meditation and please welcome Reverend Richard Scholler. Hello to everyone and thank you for allowing me to be a part of this service. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Reverend Richard P. Scholler from Huntington, Long Island, and I'm privileged with offering this meditation today. Take a soft and gentle breath in and let it all go. Take a second, soft and gentle breath all the way down. Release it and let it go. Take a third clearing, cleansing breath. Release it and let it go. There's nowhere for you to be, nothing for you to do, but to be present to this time, to this space, and to relax into peacefulness. As you sit in this space and breathe, if you haven't already, gently close your eyes. As you close your eyes, allow yourself to see or sense or feel, become aware of the light of spirit, filling the room that you're in. As the light of the infinite fills the room that you're in, give yourself permission to sense it as it surrounds your physical being. All is well. As the light surrounds your physical being, you feel yourself becoming a little more relaxed, a little more at ease. Because there's a safety, there's a comfort in feeling the light of God as it surrounds you. So you breathe and relax and rest a little more fully into the chair. And as you rest a little more fully, you give permission for the light of God in all of its brilliance to gently move into the crown or the top of your head. And as that light gently moves into the crown or top of your head, you feel all of your thoughts, your concerns, your mental worries softening. You feel yourself letting go of the mind and relaxing more fully into being. That light moves gently through your head down to your neck and throat. And as that light moves gently down to your neck and throat, you feel your entire head, your face, your eyes, nose, mouth, your ears, your cheeks, your jawline, everything begins to relax. Even the area at the top of your spine, gently by the occiput where so much tension is normally held. And so your head, filled with the light of the infinite God, allowing that light to move to your neck and throat, where your throat begins to soften. There's nothing for you to say or do. Your neck begins to relax. 
And with the light of God in its infinite magnificence, it moves across your shoulders. Your shoulders soften, relax, and the light moves down your back. You feel your breathing become even more natural, more relaxed. The light of the infinite relaxes every muscle in your back, so much so that you can relax more fully into your chair. You become aware of the light of the infinite at your shoulders and it moves gently down your arms from your shoulders to your elbows, filling your biceps and triceps, from your elbows down to your wrists, filling your forearms, through your wrists and out into your fingertips, the light of the infinite flows. And as it does, all parts of your arms come to a place of peace and comfort for the light of the infinite God flows through them. As you breathe and relax, you become aware of your, the light at your shoulders gently moving over your chest. And as it moves across your chest, you feel your chest relax. Breathing becomes a little more soft and easy. The tension, the worry that you hold in your chest dissipates. The light moves down to your abdomen. Your abdomen relaxes. The worry that you hold in your belly softens and dissolves. And as you breathe, the light moves down to your pelvis, fills the pelvic area. And the anger, the tension, the frustration that you hold in your pelvic area gently fades away. The light of the infinite God as it moves from your head down to your pelvic bowl, through your arms, out through your fingertips and down your back to your sacrum, relaxes you and helps to bring you back into attunement with the you you know yourself to be. The light at your sacrum circulates around your tuchus, your buttocks. And as it does, any shame or tension gently dissipates and the light moves from your buttocks and your pelvis down your legs. From your hips, filling your thighs, all the way to your kneecaps. And as the light moves to your kneecaps, it circulates around the joint and works its way down your shins and calves to your ankles. The light of the infinite flows from your hips all the way down to your ankles, circulating around them making their way through them, into your feet, out through your feet, down into the ground. The light of the infinite that surrounds your entire physical being moves through your entire physical being from your head, down out through your toes and fingertips. And now you breathe and relax even more fully, being more peaceful, more at ease and more connected. As you rest in this space, you feel the sense of this light as it expands within your being, bringing every cell in your body into complete alignment with your divine self and your connection to infinite intelligence. As you breathe and relax and each cell comes into alignment with the source of all being infinite intelligence, 
you feel a sense of expansiveness. And ever so gently, allow yourself to feel the presence of spirit standing with you in this meditation. A loving teacher behind you, relatives and friends standing with you. As you breathe and relax in this magnificent space, allow your awareness to expand out so that you can sense your relatives and friends, so that you can feel the love of them as it reverberates with you so that you can hear their expression of love. And with that, just breathe. As you rest in this space, express gratitude to those who are present with you. And ever so softly, gently, Become aware that it's time to return to conscious awareness of where you are. Become aware of your physicality, your feet, your socks, your shoes, your stockings, your sandals. Become aware of your physicality and your jeans, your slacks, your pants, your skirts, your dresses. Breathe and relax and become aware of your shirts, your blouses, your tops, your sweaters, your t-shirts. Gently call yourself back into the present moment in your room, in your chair. Bringing yourself back from this meditative experience into conscious awareness of the moment that you are truly in, the eternal moment of now in your physicality, having had the time to bridge physical and spiritual realms, but come back feeling fully refreshed. Take another deep breath all the way down. Let it go. Gently open your eyes, bring yourself into complete conscious awareness of where you are in this time and space. And as you become more consciously aware, send a thought of gratitude to spirit for allowing you to have this time in connection. Amen. Thank you, Richard. That was lovely. So it's my privilege uh, to welcome to our service the Reverend Joanne Santanacito. She is the secretary of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches. She's also co-chair of the NSAC Hydesville Memorial Park Committee and pastor of the Attunement Spiritualist Chapel in Hamburg, New York, and pastor of the Plymouth Spiritualist Church in Rochester, New York. She's been a member of NSAC for 20 years and um, we are so very blessed. She's going to be um, presenting our invocation this morning. Uh, be but before she does, um, let me introduce our opening piece of music. Uh, this is a song written specifically for Hydesville Day. You may not know it, but we're gonna learn it together. So we're gonna put the words up on the screen and we can sing along at home uh, together and probably by the end of the day, you will know it. <laughs> so let's sing together. March 31st marks the date When in 1848 Events took place that began A new community New York in a cottage small Where two fox sisters got the call No 
one around Not a sound Then came the knocks And the rats most profound It surprised them Yes, we know From the start How did it grow Helping each to understand Communication is not new It had its start when the world was new But we should know in modern times These two sisters receive the signs Natives in lands far away They could tell what God would say Let me present Reverend Joanne Santosito for the invocation. Let us pray. Infinite Intelligence, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this glorious day. Thank you for allowing us to be together while we are physically separated. We ask that you fill us with your spirit of love in unity around the world as we celebrate Hydesville Days. Please help us to truly live our lives from a place of love. We need your inspiration and love to stir our hearts and help guide us on this most miraculous day. We pray for health and wellness to all in attendance and all our loved ones, both here and in the hereafter. May today be blessed with abundance as we may keep the Fox Family Foundation around for many years to come. Amen. Thank you so much, Joanne. Um, in honor of the Fox children, we thought it would be very lovely today to uh, read together our simplified Declaration of Principles that uh, the children in Lyceum recite. So um, if you're not that familiar with them, that's okay. We're going to put them up on the screen and uh, we'll be able to recite them together. Our Declaration of Principles simplified version. We believe in God. We believe that God is expressed through all nature. True religion is living in obedience to nature's laws. We never die. Spiritualism proves that we can talk with people in the spirit world. Be kind, do good, and others will do likewise. We bring happiness to ourselves by the errors we make, and we will be happy if we obey the laws of life. Every day is a new beginning. Prophecy and healing are expressions of God. Many of you have heard it, but I would love to repeat that famous quote from one of our great pioneers, Andrew Jackson Davis, known as the father of modern American spiritualism, who prophesied and wrote on the morning of March 31st, 1848. About daylight this morning, 
a warm breathing passed over my face and I heard a voice tender and strong saying, brother, the good work has begun. Behold, a living demonstration is born. And as you know, on the evening of the same day, some 300 miles away in Hydesville, New York, the Fox sisters established intelligent communication with the spirit of a peddler marking the birth of modern spiritualism. This morning, I'm very privileged to introduce our speaker. Uh, she's one of the co-chairs of the Hydesville Committee, uh, and that is the Reverend Cozy L. Allen uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada. She's a national spiritualist teacher, a certified medium, a commissioned spiritualist healer, and she's also the pastor and member of the Golden Rule Spiritualist Church in Northern Lake, Michigan, Spiritualist Camp. Um, and she's also the editor of the NSAC Lyceum Spotlight for our children. She's a member of the Morris Pratt Institute in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, president of the Michigan State Spiritualist Association of Churches, and vice president of the National Spiritualist Association of Churches. She is also a songwriter and uh, for Hydesville and for the so Fox Sisters, she wrote an original song called Our Place. So we're going to listen to this beautiful song and perhaps you'll learn this song as well. You can sing along at home. Uh, we're going to put that uh, piece of music up for you to see the lyrics. And then following will be Reverend Cozy Allen with the address. March 31st, 1848, brought to the world the knowledge of a place, a place that is real, a place that's very close, a place that's just beyond this physical, this physical place. And our family that have gone on before Just wait for the moment when we hear their call The call that says we love you the call that says we care We're here to give guidance We're here Cause we care This place is called the Summerland By other spirit world that we live and we start building it from here With the thoughts and our deeds, our actions we decide How strong the foundation of the house will reside Please let's remember and never forget March 31st, 1848 place that is real, a place that's very close, a place that's just beyond this physical, this physical plane. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. God bless you all for joining us on this anniversary, the 173rd anniversary to modern American spiritualism. I think there's so many things I would like to say, many that we have all heard by the glorious, wonderful speakers from this morning forward. But what a joy it is uh, as uh, we all come uh, together, as we stand in the memory, as we stand in the understanding that uh, there is uh, no death, uh, there are no dead. What glorious words uh, fills uh, my very soul. Um, 
And as we go Sunday into a celebration of Easter, the time we celebrate, um, the mediumships that we know have been demonstrated here in this existence of life, uh, materialization, um, direct voice, um, levitation. Let us remember on this day, Sunday, we will all throughout the universe be celebrating what we as spiritualists have known since March 31st, 1848, that truly life is continuous, that the soul and the spirit continue on to the glorious place, the summerland, the spirit world, where we live and we go from one expression of life to the other. And as we have learned from those little children on the day when they played a game and they communicated with the, the sound of the raps in the building, in their home, and they began a code the code that expressed to them, Charles B. Rosna was there. Charles B. Rosna had a family, a wife and five children. That he lived and was living in the spirit world. That was our new dispensation between ancient spiritualism and modern spiritualism. In 1820, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to an individual, 1820, where he spoke of he himself was a materialist, but Jesus, the man Jesus, he felt, was a spiritualist. How glorious it was when the word spiritualism was uttered prior to Andrew Jackson Davis coming forward. And six years later and lived and grew in a world where he communed with providence, where he communed with spirit. And he brought that forth in his writings uh, that were given to him by Galen and Sweden, Emanuel Swedenborg. And as the evolution of the understanding of spirit, of spirit communication continued, we were there at Hydesville in 1847 when the Wheatman family owned, were living in the cottage. <laughs> And they heard the communication, they heard the sounds of spirit, but without an understanding, because of fear, they soon left the residence. And that is when the Fox family entered and lived the early life in Hydesville in the cottage. Those little girls heard the raps they were able to communicate through an understanding and the code that was brought. <coughs> and as we here continue to evolve um, our truths and understanding of spiritualism, as was said just moments ago, the question to us uh, was, could you imagine what they felt like as they were, how they were treated when they were here in the physical world? Let us remember that those uh, little girls were put before committees uh, 
to prove what they was being done, the raps. was truly spirit. As uh, they stood on charred glass with a pillow on top, their bare feet was on the pillow. I wonder myself if I could have withstood uh, those challenges, the challenges that the Fox sisters had as they were pulling into a train station and as they were about to be exiting the train, they were stopped because there were individuals there wanting to harm them because they felt they were of the devil. My friends, we have evolved so far in our pathway, in our journey into the truths of spiritualism. I say to you this day, continue the understanding. Make it the next, have the next 100 years forward um, be your destiny of life as a spiritualist. Your journey forward, my friends, shall be of the truth of spirit and with the understanding that spirit has brought for you. with the knowledge that the spirit world is merely a breath away. As we are living in this expression of life, my friends, here in this physical existence, understand and continue the teachings that the spirit world is here amongst us now as we speak. The spirit world is a world that is connected with this earthly plane only at a higher vibration. Let us understand that we are only a moment and a breath away <laughs> from those that are ever so close with us. As they light our pathway from the spirit world to here in the physical world for us to walk on, let us as spiritualists continue to light the pathway for all those who are here in the physical world with a greater understanding of the truths of spirit, the natural laws that guide us on our pathway, the truths and understanding of all of the natural laws that guide us on our pathway. The understanding that we each have the understanding of all things, all trials and tribulations that come before us in this existence. Let us not shy away from expressing our understanding of spiritualism for all that we come in contact with. Do not be afraid, my friends. Understand that spiritualism is a beautiful way of life that all individuals in this expression of life express every moment of every day whether they are consciously aware of it. It is our duty to spiritualism, to the pioneers before us, to bring that understanding to all that we come in contact with this day and all days forward. God bless each and every one of you as you walk your pathway on this expression of life with a greater understanding of the truth the understanding and the love, but more than all else, the unconditional love of infinite intelligence that dwells within each and every one this day in all days. God bless you all. God bless you.
Uh, we now come to another opportunity for you to give our offering. Uh, during our offering, we have a very special solo. Some of you may be familiar with the song Child of Light. And I think about the Fox sisters uh, so many times actually in physical danger and being very far from home and perhaps feeling very lost, but knowing they were children of light. And this song is being sung uh, by a friend of mine, Alexandra Bodmer, and the musician is Ro Cubay, a professional keyboardist, violinist, etc. So we're going to um, give you this opportunity to um, click on the link in the chat and donate while you listen to this beautiful song, Child of Light.
like to take this opportunity to bless uh, our offering this morning, this evening, this afternoon. Infinite Spirit, bless these gifts that were presented to us to, so lovingly to preserve our history, to acknowledge the eternal truth of communication, the eternal truth of eternal life. Bless each the giver and may we use these funds to spread the light of spiritualism throughout the world. In the name of love and light and truth, amen. We now come to a very sacred portion of our service. This is the message portion of our service and we are very excited to have message ministers from around the world serving. I'm going to introduce them all first and then have them get up one after the other. Um, before our message service begins, we have a wonderful uh, musician who is going to sing for us. Her name is Laura Wooten. She is a writer and yoga teacher and is just the cutest little ukulele player and singer I have come across. Uh, in everything she does, her main intention is just to create love in the world and to inspire others to do the same. So Laura will join us, uh, but first let me present and introduce our message ministers. After Laura sings, um, we will first have um, the president of the International Spiritualist Federation and president of Seaford Spirit and Independent Spiritualist Center, Robin Hodson. He is an English medium with over 30 years experience serving spiritualist churches and centers both in his native Britain and America, Canada, Finland, Iceland, Australia, and Sweden. In addition to the church and public platform presentations of mediumship, Robin is an experienced tutor in the various forms of mediumship. His main area of interest is trance and physical mediumship, having run physical circles for over 25 years. Robin will be followed by Jackie Wright. Jackie is from the Northeast of England and has a passion for serving the spirit world in whatever capacity they desire, be it teaching, demonstrating, or private sittings. Jackie inherited her mediumistic ability from her paternal grandmother, who had died long before Jackie was born. Jackie's home is in the industrial town of Middlesbrough, but she has been fortunate to share her mediumship all over the UK and the world. Jackie's philosophy has always been, retain your individuality, your uniqueness, because that is why the spirit world <clears throat> because that is why the spirit world has chosen you. Jackie encourages the students to search for themselves and become their own authority within their development, not to believe it because the teacher says so. Jackie is not interested in developing clones, but instead wants the student to explore their own unique relationship with those in the spirit world. Jackie is a course organizer and tutor at the world-renowned Arthur Fenley College in Stansted, uh, which she is at present the chairman. She has achieved many awards, including diplomas in demonstrating, speaking, and teaching. Jackie is also a minister and the vice president of the Spiritualist National Union. Jackie will be followed by Matt and Kirsty Grogan. Kirsty has been working for Spirit for over 20 years. She is a certified medium, certified healer trainer, and clinical hypnotherapist based in the southeast of England. She serves churches and centers across the UK, Ireland and Europe, as well as teaching healing and mediumship, both in the UK and abroad. Kirsty is a church member of NSAC Church JT and EJ Crumbaugh Church in Illinois and a member of the International Spiritualist Federation. Her husband, Matt Grogan, is an acclaimed medium, healer, trainer, and chairperson. 
Working together with his wife, Kirsty, he demonstrates and teaches across the UK, Ireland, and Europe. He is presently studying with the Morse Pratt Institute in the US and is a member of the NSAC Church, JT and EJ Crumbaugh in the US. They will be followed by the Reverend Stacy Kopchinski, who is an ordained minister, certified medium, commissioned healer, national spiritualist teacher through the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, and has been a spiritualist for many years. Stacy is a member of the Lilydale Assembly and the International Spiritualist Federation. She has served at many spiritualist churches and camps throughout the country. She also makes bi-yearly trips to Canada to teach as well. She has been actively teaching and helping others to develop their spiritual skills for the past seven years. She started her own communication with those living in spirit when her beloved grandpa left this earthly life for the spiritual life when she was in kindergarten. The most important thing in development is the desire to help humanity, the commitment to work, and the openness to spirit. So before our message bearers begin, uh, I want to again introduce Laura Wooten. She's going to be singing an original song that she wrote herself. And this song is about the communication she received from her father after his transition. And he used to call her his baby girl. So hear this special live music from Laura Wooten singing Baby Girl. Thank you so much, Carol. <laughs> Days when the clouds block the sun Sometimes it feels like my heart has come undone Then the tears, the tears they start to fall And I feel like I can't go on at all Then I hear you saying, no more crying, let your tears fall away, the sun is shining. Thank you all. Unfortunately, the time of our service is coming to a close, but I hope you will stay on the Hydesville link and enjoy uh, spending the day with us in our celebration. Uh, so now may I present again Robin Hudson, who is going to give our benediction. So friends, if we can just 
come together in this moment. Divine and infinite spirit, in the coming together we find strength. Strength whether perceived or whether actual. But it doesn't matter when like minds join and spirit join. There is a divine blessing. We ask that all that are connected with this service, all that are connected with this day, will receive the joy that it brings to others. We ask that within this time, we will all find something that will take us forward in the week and put joy in our heart. Help us to be satisfied with the past and all that is taught us to be content with the present and all that we have, but more so be hopeful for the future and all it promises to bring. Amen.